All right, um, just a one last thing on this chapter, and we'll talk about a, uh, another idea with bulk electrolysis, and that is uh, what I call thin layer voltammetry. And again, uh, uh, the, uh, what, the, what we're trying to accomplish here is always in the bulk electrolysis. You saw with the stripping voltammetry, we've, we've uh, minimized the volume of solution to increase our analytical sensitivity. In this case, what we're going to do is also decrease the volume of solution, but rather than using a mercury drop or mercury film, we're just going to use a regular solution. And so the idea with thin layer voltammetry is to develop a cell that will allow us to do that particular process. Let's suppose we have a uh, thin layer cell. Well, we can have a normal electrode. What we can do is rather than having it exposed to a bulk of solution, we can put next to that thin electrode some sort of insulating boundary. So another, a glass wall or a plastic or something like that. The difference between this two, the electrode, the parallel electrode and the boundary is, is uh, would be called L. We could use a uh, auxiliary electrodes on either side to supply the uh, potential or current that we need to do the reaction. So here's our working electrode and so on. Now rather than having a freely diffusing system, a semi-infinite boundary conditions, now our boundary conditions are fixed by the boundary of the uh, insulating boundary itself. So L is typically much, much less than the diffusion time distance that we would normally experience. So by putting L, you know, close to the electrode, we can minimize the diffusion distance of the uh, electrode. So the mass transfer becomes now a negligible part of the overall electrochemical process. So that means we can do a couple of things. One is we can eliminate the diffusion coefficient term in the, in the curves. It also means that we can predict some of the properties using thin layer type uh, theory that we've already developed. The other thing is that we can concentrate on electrochemical kinetics to uh, determine some kinetic effects using thin layer things, thin layer uh, theory, because the mass transport is, it becomes negligible. A couple different ways that I've illustrated there. One is to use, a, a, say, a glass tube and install in that glass tube your electrode. Typically, then, the electrode would have a, a little glass bead at the end. And the glass would be act as a, a little cap, and that should be more parallel than it is. But so platinum or gold, and this would be a glass tube. And so the thin layer would be the distance between one wall and the electrode itself. And the glass bead would also help to center that wire in between the tube. The other way is to use a micrometer that you might use in a machine shop and put your electrodes as in between those two arms of the micrometer. And by using the positioner, you can adjust the distance between those two, and you can have at the faces, you can attach little platinum electrodes on one side, maybe a little plastic piece on the other side to glue them on, and then you can adjust very carefully the distance between those two faces using the, the normal adjustments of the micrometer. So you can not only make a gap, but you can make an adjustable gap, which is kind of nice. You don't need to put this in solution. All you need to do, because the capillary force is just apply a droplet of solution to the uh, to the, to the uh, gap between those two. Of course, that'd be much closer than I've shown here. And the capillary forces would keep that material in the gap. You have a small volume, and so the chronoamperometry, for example, will completely reduce all the material within a fairly short period of time. So T approaching infinity, which, as I said, may be very small, maybe a few seconds. And so you would have NF 
V C zero star and since V and C zero star is a constant, you would get an FN as your system. So you can use these thin layer cells to quickly determine the number of electrons that you need to do, and that's often useful. If you do CV, uh, if it's reversible, you get basically the thin layer type behavior. Remember, we talked about absorbed molecules. Well, with the thin layer, you'd get essentially the same basic result. You'd get Gaussian-shaped peaks. Uh, if I'd drawn that correctly, we'd see symmetric delta EP would be zero, and the peak current would be N squared, F squared, V, times the volume C0 star over 4RT. So the difference between the thin layer cell that we talked about, the thin layer behavior we talked about before is just the matter, the volume, and concentration. So rather than having an absorbed amount of material, we just have VC0 star. Again, like polymer films, the only difference, uh, as I said, is this, is this term here. V, again, the small V is the sweep rate. With kinetics, that would shift, and so we can use the shift in the peaks just like before to detect the kinetic parameters without the worries of mass transport in the system. Sounds, sounds great, doesn't it? Well, there's some, always some trouble in paradise here. The main problem with uh, thin layer cells is that there's often a large amount of IR drop. Because that volume of solution is quite thin, the resistance between, say, these two electrodes from here to here becomes appreciable. And so when a large current flows, they can get some potential drop, and that potential drop will be variable from one end to the middle. And so there is a potential drop here, which means that the potential at the center of the electrode is less than the potential at the edges, means there's a different rate constant all through that surface of the electrode, which is not so great. Uh, coronal amperometry will fix that, but that's not what you need for kinetic measurements. You don't want to use coronal amperometry. Non-uniform current distribution is a problem. But you can usually kind of work around that. Use smaller amounts of material, so smaller solution concentration, so you don't have to have so much IR drop in and so on. People still use them, although they're less commonly used as they were originally. Another variation is the dual thin layer electrode. The idea here is that rather than one electrode being facing an insulating behavior, be, uh, insulating layer, you actually have two separate working electrodes at which we can polarize at two different potentials. So if we looked at that, you might put E2 at the top of one, A1 at the other one. You can think of this as an auxiliary electrode, say E1, but you can also think of it in a different way entirely. You can think of it as kind of the rotating ring disk experiment, except the difference in the rotating ring disk electrode experiment than this one is that there is the ability for the material that is being transferred across to transfer back across. Rotating ring disk, the material at the disk always goes out in one direction. Here, because there's only diffusion controlling back and forth, uh, we can get what they call a feedback effect. You can get a reaction occurring at one electrode and the other electrode. So you can put an O in here being reduced, go back to O, and this circling or the cycling of O to R is dependent on the gap width. It's ultimately dependent on the diffusion coefficient, but by making the gap width variable, you can actually set the cycling time, and that will set the amount of current that flows. If the gap width is very small, the cycling time becomes very rapid, and the current will increase. If you decrease the gap, make it larger, the current will decrease. If we set the potential starting at, say, E1 and sweep the potential of E2, you can get a curve for E2. And you'll get, let's call that working to work WE2. Okay, and this is E WE2. And you keep uh, E1 at the, at the uh, 
at the initial potential, you'll get a, a feedback effect and you'll see an exact symmetrical shape of the, uh, for the current at E1. And the limiting current will not be reflective of the diffusion time constant, but in fact the cycling time constant between those two. So ILC and ILA should be equal. And the limiting current is equal to NFA concentration, the mass transfer coefficient, as always, mass transfer coefficient in this case is going to be diffusion coefficient divided by L, the distance. So the shorter you make that distance, the more current you get to flow. So it's kind of like a rotating disk electrode in that you can increase the rate of mass transport almost infinite, infinitely by decreasing the, the distance. The problem is with fairly large electrodes, say those are both a centimeter in size, uh, it's hard to get them exactly parallel. So once you once they're off by a, say a tenth of a degree, one side is going to become quite close than the other, and so they eventually will short at one point while the other part is still a significant distance away. A uh, solution for that is not really a solution, but a w way to do these experiments with very small gaps is something that we've been working on and I was working on with Al Bard is called a scanning electrochemical microscope, or the SCCM. And the idea with the scanning electrochemical microscope, it uses a small electrode that we can place very close to another electrode. I can't spell today. SECM. The geometry is not exactly the same as the geometry we just talked about, but the idea is very similar. If you take a, a tip that is in glass, but polished so that the end is exposed to form a little disc, this is a cylinder material that's in glass, and so that if you looked at it in cross section, you would see something like so a little disk, you can approach that to your surface. And so this could be working electrode two, working electrode one. Now we have other uses for that, but the idea here is the same. You bring that very close and you get a distance between the two, which is L, and in SECM it's often used, the word, the abbreviation D is used instead of L. Same sort of behavior takes place. Uh, when it's far enough away, you, this sort of, it would not exactly be very close to the thin layer cell, but you can actually move that quite close so that if your tip was here, your, your other electrode might be here or even closer than that. And in that case, the, the response is very much like the thin layer cell. In fact, it's identical. You can, you can make an exact correlation between a thin layer cell by two parallel opposed electrodes or SECM at a bigger electrode. And the current is as before is going to be um, NFA C0 star and it would be D over D, small d, which is the distance between the two. Now the advantage of the SECM over the other ones is that because the tip itself is quite small, we can get proportionately closer. So it's not difficult really to get to less than a t couple tenths of a micrometer away, in which case the current now becomes large relative to the area, it's still pretty small, but it's large relative to the area of the electrodes. What that means to you is that because the mass transport, co transport coefficient now is quite large, d over d, the kinetic effects now become important. So using this method we can just go to a higher mass transfer port rates, which means we can examine higher rates of electron transfer kinetics. Remember always the idea with these sorts of experiments is by looking at the, by making the mass transfer rate higher and higher, that puts it in a situation where the, the electron transfer kinetics start to become limiting, 
And so by changing the mass transfer rates to large values, we can see the, mass, the effects of kinetic limitations more clearly and make measurements more easily. In fact, the curves that you see here are very similar to the rotating disk electrode curves. And if you compare the mass transfer coefficient, you would see at, say, a rotating disk electrode at whatever, at, under normal conditions, and the mass transfer coefficient you'd see, for example, with a SECM at 0.2 microns away, you'd have to rotate the rotating disk electrode disk at about 200,000 RPM to get the same mass transfer coefficient as you would get with a rotating disk electrode. Now that's not possible. You can sometimes go up to 10,000 RPM with a rotating disk electrode. So easily you can get 20-fold improvement with this small electrode, really with a simpler experimental procedure, actually. Um, it's a little tricky to move it close, but in fact, it's not that hard. And the electrodes themselves are much cheaper. Remember, we talked about RDE electrodes costing two, three hundred, four hundred dollars. These are about ten dollars to make, maybe at the most. So, um, so there is some advantages there that are being are being investigated. It's still not a widely used method, but that's what's one of the advantages people have. So kinetic detection is, is something you can do with the thin layer cells and with this SECM using it in a thin layer of cell geometry. Okay, well we're done with that chapter. Let's um, quit there. I don't see any um, homework there, so let's just ignore it. Let's not have any homework for next time. I've I looked through all of there and I didn't have any. <laughs> Maybe that's what I meant to do. Thank you, Russ. Uh, well, we'll um, we'll skip it. Give you a break, I guess. Give you some time to work on your project. So we have a little bit of time left. Let's talk about our, our paper. And what we're going to talk about next week, let's, uh, I guess let's put that in there. Next week is uh, we'll start talking about coupled homogeneous reactions, and that's chapter 11, starting chapter 11 in your book. I've been handing out the notes and a little bit of extra material. And most of this is going to be talking about with, in the context of cyclic voltammetry experiments, which is really the most common method people use to at least initially investigate chemical reactions that occur with electron transfer reactions. And so what we'll be looking at is how we can use cyclic voltammetry to detect the presence of a chemical reaction occurring with, a, with an electron transfer and how we can get mechanistic and kinetic information out of those, of those, uh, those curves. So it's kind of, it's actually, it gets to be quite complicated. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a fairly minimal discussion of it, but uh, you'll see even a minimal one and gets very deep quickly. All right.